Let's go into a little more detail on the Treaty of Versailles. So we've already talked about it helping to establish the League of Nations, but in specific, or particularly with regards to Germany, the biggest aspect of it was its application of war guilt, essentially putting the full blame of the war on Germany. Maybe you could justify it by saying, look, Germany was the most aggressive actor at the beginning of the war, declaring war on Russia and France without much provocation. But then the counter argument would be, look, Austria-Hungary had already declared war on Serbia, Russia, had already mobilized, but then the counter counter argument, well, Germany gave a blank check to Austria. It said it would back up Austria no matter what Austria had done. Needless to say, this applied a lot of the Germans were not happy about being assigned the full blame of war guilt. Now, on top of that, we've already talked about the notion that it really it really diminished, the Treaty of Versailles really forced the German military to be dram diminished dramatically down to 100,000 troops, which is really now more of a glorified police force. It was also forbidden from forming a union with Austria. And you might say, why Austria in particular? Well, Austria is a German-speaking state. And so there, you could imagine, there's a lot of ethnic affinity or linguistic affinity between Germany and Austria. So this is not allowed according to the Treaty of Versailles. And then on top of that, Germany loses its colonies. And these colonies we've already talked about, these are colonies in Africa, colonies in Asia, and colonies in the Pacific. Then on top of that, we have the reparations. We have the reparations estimated at the equivalent in 2013 terms of about 450 billion US dollars. That doesn't get fully paid, but it still has a huge toll on the German economy, especially because the reparations were not just paid in currency, they were paid in resources. And to make sure that they were paid in resources, the Allies actually occupied the Saar region the Saar region right over here, which was coal rich. And it, for the next 15 years, it would ship that coal, it would ship that coal to France. So they, the Allies weren't just getting paid in currency, they were getting paid in dollars. But this would also have the effect as, the, as Weimar Germany, the Weimar Republic, this is the, this is the government of Germany after World War I, called the Weimar Republic because its constitution was drafted in the city of Weimar. In order to try to pay the currency portions of the reparations, lets the printing presses go free, tries to convert into other currencies, and then you essentially have hyperinflation in Germany through the early 20s, through 1923. And on top of that, once this hyperinflation happens and they no longer can pay their reparations, then in order to continue to extract resources from Weimar Germany, France goes ahead and occupies the Ruhr region, which is right about here. It's also very rich in steel and coal, and they began shipping they began shipping the resources out, which was a huge, another huge humiliation for the Germans. And on top of that, it's crippling the German economy. They're taking all of the main resources out of the German economy. This happened in 1923 as well. And the combined effect of one, just the humiliation of World War I, the, the shipping away of resources, now this occupation of the Ruhr region, which was never even part of the uh, already bad Treaty of Versailles from the Germans' point of view, this helped bring support for fairly more and more extreme parties in Germany. And as you go into the end of 1923, it gave some energy for Hitler's, at the time, fairly small National Socialists, or their Nazis, to attempt a coup d'etat of the government, attempt their beer hall putsch. It ends up failing, but it does give a lot of energy to what was before a very uh, a marginalized or very small party. To, because of this occupation, allows that party to, to grow by, by a significant amount. But on top of that, let's talk about the, the actual territorial losses, all of the territorial losses. You have this little region up here, the north part of East Prussia. At first, it becomes a French protectorate according to the Treaty of Versailles, but then it's later taken over by Lithuania. We've already talked about this whole region of Germany, of the former German Empire that's carved away in order to give it to the new state of Poland. Most of Poland is carved out of the former Russian Empire. Part is carved out of the former German Empire, and also part is car carved out of the former Austro-Hungarian Empire. Then you have this region right here in Silesia. Part of it goes to Poland. Part of it goes to Czechoslovakia. You have the famous Alsace and Lorraine, Alsace and Lorraine region right over here. It had been a cause of contention with, between Germany and France for many, many, many years. Now this goes back to France. You have a little piece right over here that goes to Belgium. And then you have the North, North Schleswig region 
goes to Denmark. Now, on top of that, as you can imagine, the, the, the diminished troops, the taking resources away, France really wanted to cripple German, Germany's ability of being able to invade at any future point in time. But on top of that, they also set up a demilitarized zone in the Rhineland. And so the Rhineland, this included both the, or the, the, the demilitarized zone, included the west bank of the Rhine River, all of Germany that was west of the Rhine River, so this entire region right over here. And then it was also occupied by the Allies. And Germany was also forbidden from militarizing or, or mobilizing troops 50, anywhere 50 kilometers east, east of the Rhine River, east of the Rhine River as well. And so you see, going out of Treaty of Versailles, uh, every, every attempt was made uh, to attempt to cripple uh, Germany's war-making abilities. And you know, they were forbidden from trading in arms, and they couldn't have you know, kind of a lot, many, many types of offensive weapons. So it really was to try to prevent uh, Germany from being able to do what they did in World War I. As we see, in a large degree, it really was maybe a catalyst for uh, giving energy to more extreme elements in Germany and, and would be uh, one of the things pointed to for, for German, Germany's involvement in World War II.